Today we're looking at a really common problem with aluminum TIG welding, and that is these peppery speckles that you get throughout your weld. There are a couple common causes. I'll show you how to correct those so you can get welds that come out nice and shiny on a regular basis. Hey, welcome to the shop. You know, it's been a while since we've done a TIG welding video, but I have a whole bunch of them that'll be coming your way in the next few weeks. If you do have questions or things you're struggling with with TIG or any other welding or fabrication process, please throw those down in the comments below so I can roll them into these upcoming videos and make sure it's what you need to help you out in your shop. Now, before we get into the common causes of this, you know, if you're chasing down a problem like this, the first thing to check are your kind of hygiene issues. So make sure at least to wipe it down with acetone if you have new material, or you might need to use a brush or some kind of abrasive if you're doing a repair. You know, it's really hot out here in the garage today. It is a hot day. And uh, I wouldn't come out here and weld all day and then go straight on a date with my wife. That'd go about as well as welding on this dirty material. Now the other thing to make sure you have is a nice clean tungsten electrode that's newly dressed. Now if you're the kind of person who will foul out your electrode and then just power through and keep going, you know who you are, it's actually me, um, then you're going to want to not do that when you're actually welding on things you care about. When you're first learning and you're just getting some reps in on flat plate, if you don't just power through, you'll probably not get anywhere up front, but uh, at a certain point, you wanna make sure that's in good condition. The most common causes though uh, have to do with gas flow and AC balance. Before we start working with gas flow and AC balance here, let's just go ahead and set a baseline for our weld. It's running really well. Everything's going as planned. You can see the aluminum oxide layer etching away on the side of the welds and also in front of where I'm welding. That's what you want to see is that aluminum oxide etching out in front of your weld so you're not running over it. Now as I'm welding here I realize I probably could use a little bit more of that etching side of the cycle to clean it just a little bit better but overall I came out with a weld that's pretty nice and clean good enough for most things so there are a few little speckles in it we'll see if we can make that a little better as we go now the gas flow rate depends on the type of cup you have it depends a little bit on your joint configuration right if you're welding in a t-joint it's going to kind of trap your gas and so you aren't going to need quite as much flow but i wouldn't get too caught up in that the, the challenge that you have is a lot of flow meters, regulator flow meters, they uh, don't read out completely accurately. So you could take my numbers. I might say, okay, for a number five cup, you want to double that plus add a little bit. So that puts you at 12 cubic feet per hour. Or if you're working in liters per minute, you use about the same as the cup size, right around five. And that usually works pretty well, unless your flow meter isn't too accurate. And mine honestly isn't uh, itself. So let's just see what happens if we run with less gas than we need. I've turned this down here to about half of the gas flow rate that I was running before. And as I weld along here, you can see it's pretty crusty. It's not flowing along as well as I'd like. And that etching region around the outside um, where it etches the oxide, it's not very wide. And that leads me to believe I'm gonna have quite a bit of contamination in these welds. We'll take a look at those in a minute, but before we do, you might be thinking, oh, well, I'll just crank my gas way up. You know, that way I'm sure that I'm covered. And now that's probably better than not having enough gas, but let's see what happens. I've turned this gas flow rate up to almost double what I'd normally run. And I'm gonna run a couple little beads right here. You can see how wide that region is etching the material out because that gas flow uh, allows the arc to actually etch a wider region out. Also, the arc is really erratic and it's really, really loud. It might be hard to tell because I kind of tweaked the volume on these videos, but uh, here, just listen for a second. Now, if you're finding that you have a really loud arc, you have this really wide etching zone, you might be running too much gas on the other side. So let's take a look at the welds that we got here. In those top two weld beads, I didn't have enough gas. And so I don't have any region around the weld really that's etched out at all. And I have those peppery speckles all over the place, lots of contamination, uh, just because I didn't have adequate gas shielding. On the other hand, if you look at those bottom two welds where I had the gas flow cranked up, they're etched out way further than I need. And while I did get a pretty clean weld, and I, it's definitely better than the two with too low gas, it's certainly not ideal. And it is a little bit harder to control while you're welding. 
So the best thing to do here with this and really with any other parameter is to run some experiments on a flat plate. I think learning to run an experiment is one of the most important things when you're learning to weld because it allows you to just change one variable at a time and really dial it in. Where I see people I've helped get frustrated is when you're welding on your project, you're working on something you're trying to build, and then you're like, oh, I'm gonna turn this up, I'm gonna turn this down, things like that. Just run a test, turn your gas up a little, run a test, turn it down a little, run a test, and you'll find where that ball needs to sit on your flow meter to make it run about right. Now with all of these things we're talking about, it's really not gonna matter without using good welding techniques. So I'm just gonna take a pause from the topic of the video here to tell you about something that I really think will help you out and it's helping a lot of people already. It's my online courses where I walk through step by step in really simple ways, uh, the way to learn TIG welding. And I also have courses for all of the other common processes so that you can learn in a really efficient and time effective way and I've priced it at a really affordable price so that it saves you a couple of hours, it's paid for itself. So now let's return to the topic at hand, and that is how do we get rid of these peppery speckles? Well, we've talked about gas flow, and, and I think gone over pretty well how to dial that in. Now let's talk a little bit about AC balance. First of all, what is AC balance? AC balance is the balance between putting heat into your part and etching off the oxide layer. Let me explain what I mean by that. So when we're welding aluminum with alternating current, what that means is the electrode switches back and forth between negative and positive over and over again. The negative side puts heat into the material. The positive side etches the oxide layer off to clean it so that you can get a nice clean weld pool. Now the weld usually needs more time putting heat into the part than it does etching oxide off of the surface. So that's where AC balance comes in, and right now it's been set at 75% electrode negative, which means that 75% of the time it's putting heat into the part, and only 25% of the time it's etching the oxide layer off with that positive side of the cycle. Now that needs to be altered a little bit based on how clean and new your material is. We're welding on new clean materials, so 75% usually runs pretty good. Let's try cranking that up to 85% here and run a weld and see how it comes out. Now, because this material is clean and new, it's actually going okay, though it's not etching out and cleaning off as well as I'd like. Let's go ahead and turn it up to 95%, which is just a ridiculous number, but 95% uh, electrode negative, just to illustrate the point. Now here, it's getting a lot of contamination in there. It's not flowing in very nicely. It's somewhat reminiscent of when we didn't have enough gas flow. So that's something to look out for. Now you might be thinking, well, you had to turn it clear up to 95% to get it to do that. Well, that's the case on this new clean material, but just go weld an aluminum casting and you'll see what I mean. You might need to crank it down around, you know, 60, 65% in some cases there, and also give a little bit of time to cook out your material. So it makes bigger difference on things like repairs. Look what happens if we give it a little bit more electrode positive than we need. Here I've cranked it down to 65% electronegative, and when I weld with this, it's flowing in pretty nicely, though you can see it's etching out a little bit wider region than I need. So I'm uh, overdoing it just a little bit, um, but definitely preferable over not enough. Either way, I think based on this, and based on the couple little peppery speckles that I got in that baseline weld, I'm gonna turn it to 70% and that's gonna work pretty well for me on this material. I'll go ahead and run one last weld here. You can see everything's flowing in nicely. That etched region is sitting outside of my weld pool all the way around, even on the leading edge so I can add that filler metal right into that front leading edge as I work along, stacking some dimes here. And when we take a look at it, it came out really nice. In fact, I think it is a bit better than that first one, though that first one was acceptable for most things. So take a dollar's worth of material, run some beads with low gas flow, high gas flow, low AC balance, high AC balance, and get a feel for that. So you're not depending on some YouTuber's settings because the problem is my settings might not work for you because your machine's gonna be a little different, your flow meter regulator's gonna be a little bit different. All those things will have an impact 
on how the settings work for you. That's why it's much better to understand the principles of how things work rather than just trying to rely on somebody's settings. So give it a try. Uh, I've linked in the description some other videos that might be helpful, including a full TIG welding tutorial as well as an aluminum TIG tutorial and also the link to my online course. Hey, well, thanks for tuning in. Until next time, weld safely and we'll see you then.